Alrighty guys, it is absolutely frigid in SA, but uh, I'm going to take a bit of opportunity while everything tries to uh, warm up and the sun hopefully comes out today and takes us from this really wacky weather that we are experiencing throughout South Africa where uh, we should be seeing summer temperatures, but in fact we have snow throughout some of the areas in South Africa, which is quite weird due to a cut of cold front or low pressure zone, whatever the scientific terminology is, I don't know, I'm not the weatherman. Uh, but I'm going to take this chance to talk to you about the Fatal Pro 18XL2000. Now, this is one of those products where I believe that, uh, like with the DS115, is perhaps they are not going to be used for their right application. Now, of course, this is just my humble opinion on what I see within the design process. And I see the same thing kind of like with the DS115, where drivers have been engineered and they have certain key characteristics which kind of indicate that you might be using them for the wrong application. Um, so let's jump into it, right, without further ado. So the XL2000, rated at 2000 watts, it is a neodymium motor and it does in fact have a demodulation ring, in fact a double demodulation ring to help lower the inductance and keep distortion at bay. Now this is very very important when we are dealing with 18 inch speakers or any speaker really where we want low distortion um, at high levels of cone displacement because what basically happens is the more the speaker moves forward uh, the less motor force we have for one so having a high motor force in this case we rate it at 30 um, BL it is uh, it becomes harder and harder for that speaker to pull itself back at very high levels of cone displacement so keeping things linear and under control sometimes becomes quite hard we have an FS of 28 Hertz and for those of you guys who know um, or get into speaker box design you will realize very quickly that FS is really a good indicator to tell you how low you can potentially go. In this case, we are under 30, so a little bit more of a lower frequency tuning potential than most drivers, which typically will sit somewhere between 35 and about 40 hertz, which is quite common for an 18 inch enclosure. Right, we have a whopping rated 16.32 millimeters worth of cone displacement, uh, which again, guys, anything beyond 12 millimeters, my opinion, is quite a big subwoofer. Uh, so we've got all this extra cone displace, uh, displacement available to us. The way Fatal Pro will work out their um, XMAX is slightly different to some other brands, of which they're taking the voice coil winding height minus the gap height divided by two, which is our first half of our calculation, which is then uh, added on to, which is our 14 millimeters, right, divided by three in Fatal Pro's case, which is then added on to the total value. Some brands use divided by four, some brands just straight up use the old school, what is our half of our actual code displacement. Uh, but either way, it has a tremendous amount with the cone displacements. In fact, if you are comparing this to say, for example, a P Audio GST 650EL, you basically talking about a speaker which is like three times its cone displacement, which is incredible, right? So it has all these good indicators, a low FS, a high BL, lots of XMAX to get down really, really low. But if you purchase this driver specifically to try and get the most low frequency extension possible, you might be buying it for the wrong reason. And I'll say that openly. In our instance, yes, it has these characteristics, but I'm going to show you quickly that it might actually be designed for a compact touring enclosure where we focus more on size and weight, because if you are moving speakers around, you will understand that to move a typical modern double 18, especially if it's built out of marine ply, which is really, really heavy, you are talking about a cabinet which can easily weigh 130 to 150 kilograms, especially if it's focused on tuning very low. So you wanna get you know flat down to 40 Hertz and lower, that box becomes really, really big. So now it's not a case of, you know, just two guys picking something up. And if you are doing an outdoor event and you are moving, let's say eight double 18s of um, 300 plus liters, you are talking about needing a lot of muscle to get around from point A to point B, right? So just before you go that route, watch the rest of this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to load up Win ISD. I already have the driver preloaded, whoops-a-daisy. 
Okay. So we are going to do a super boom box. And typically speaking, when you work with WinISD or um, you know other tools like Basebox Pro, it does give you the option to kind of generically create an enclosure for you. Well, sorry, my hands are absolutely freezing. I've lost control of my fingers. Um, all right, it will give you some default options and it will try and work out an enclosure for you, in which case your boom box within WinISD is typically speaking your smaller, higher tuned cabinets, right? It keeps your cone displacement relatively better under control versus an extended low frequency cabinets. Remember guys, control is critical. When you start going from um, trying to hunt for lows, uh, there's hunting for lows and then there's keeping the cone under control. And I think every serious brand will optimize and, and try and help you get more cone control, lower distortion, you know, qualitative factors um, out of a cabinet or out of a driver they're just hunting for lows so we're going to use our boom box as this example i'm just going to write the header down as boom and i'm going to create another project here right with the fatal pro the 18xl 2000 and next and we are still going to go vented but we are going to ask this driver to go into a sub variant and you will notice very quickly what happens right well not much in fact, they kind of look like they are giving the same response. And this is one of the key indicators to me that a driver has been optimized to actually work in a relatively compact box or the design of the driver is, is suitable. You know, it, it was targeted, right? So it, we can see that very, very quickly by comparing the size of our boxes. Now, our sub variation, when ISD has put us into 72 liters, that is tiny, guys. This is the dual 10 inch line array cabinet, right? 10, 10, we've got a horn flare and everything else in between. And if I click on the body over here and we have a look at the properties, we are 0.065 meters cubes. What that means in liters is we are 65 liters, which if we think about it and go back to our cabinet design, this is a really tiny cabinet. 72 liters let that sink in for a second this is a dual 10 inch line array right not really any bigger than what you might anticipate from a typical dual 10 right so we can just fit our components in we have a few millimeters on either side but that is 65 liters versus 72 liters we are talking about a really really compact enclosure and it's kind of put it in the same size in fact our boom box is actually in a slightly bigger enclosure than our sub variation ain't that so strange right and you will see this typically with something like the 18ds115 whereas it possibly is being used for various other applications but it doesn't necessarily belong it is very important to understand guys that the speakers are products that are engineered to meet certain applications and a lot of people fail to actually go and ask the brand or the supplier or the manufacturer like hey man what did you guys actually design this speaker for what was the intent because if you go to fatal pro eminence bnc 18 sound selection they have not one not two but 20 variations of subwoofers all 18s why do they have this extensive catalog when they could just make a good 18 well they're all designed with things in mind right and in this particular instance that thing in mind is possibly going to be around touring right so if you have moved a double 18 that is 300 liters you will understand that it especially if it's made out of marine ply it becomes very very heavy it's not a two-man lift it in fact is a four-man lift to move those things around and if you are doing outdoor events right and you deem yourself a professional you do not want to move eight subs each weighing 150 kilograms you know let's go and pull out the calculator and let's say 150 kilograms times by eight subs right what is our weight 1200 kilograms guys madness really and that's what a lot of people are doing you guys are building great cabinets 
extended low frequency boxes, you know, the the subs complete weigh 100 plus kilograms, it is very, very heavy, especially when you're using ferrite based motors. Okay, so let's go and bump this sub variation up and just work with a little bit of a, a slightly higher tuning. You know, 150 liters would be, I would say about the average low frequency tune type of cabinet. And you can see we're practically reaching out to a minus six dBs, you know, minus five dBs at 30 Hertz in 150 liter cabinets. But let's go down to 100 and bump this tuning up ever so slightly. We can come out to about 35 Hertz. You can see we are producing minus three dBs round about 40 Hertz, guys. That typically speaking, is still a very compact cabinet and we could tune this up a little bit higher if you really wanted to try and generate a flatter response but now we are talking about an extended low frequency cabinet in a hundred liters for a single 18 which is quite impressive to give you an idea if you are looking at a product like uh, lightwood you're talking about being able to get very deep low frequency extension um, in a cabinet which is 100 liters and that's possibly about a sheet of plywood um, if, if it's nicely optimized and if you're using something like lightwood let's go and actually have a look what is the weight of this right and you said okay listen I'm gonna focus purely on trying to become as light as possible so we are 11.3 kilograms and a sheet of 15 millimeter lightwood plywood if we doubled up on the face we should still have enough material weighs 20 kilograms so we are talking about a complete cabinet that will in fact weigh under 35 kilograms which is crazy right so for touring guys the 18 xl 2000 makes a whole lot of sense so if you are looking to get yourself a really good quality high performance driver to work in touring applications because you're tired of trying to pull around something which weighs more than your ex-wife this is going to be a really good solution right if we have a look at things like cone displacement at volume so let's go and quickly stick in a thousand watts to this driver all right and let's go down to our rear airport velocity of course this is going to be through the roof at this particular stage so typically speaking we're going to use a square port and we're going to say uh, what are we in centimeters so we're going to be 50 centimeters width on the box by 10. Uh, we could even possibly make this a little bit smaller uh, let's go and rock this out to you know let's work on the size what is our maximum width here on our driver we are 440 on the bolts 460 so you know what let's leave 10 mils either side of the driver quickly and take this out to 48 uh, by 10 centimeters we are well within vent velocity at a thousand watts right thousand watts guys let's quickly be fair to the brand here as well because in order to get win isd not to give us any errors um the x max the way it calculates is going to work out to 11.7 uh, but we are rated out to 16.3 whoops it is 16.32 millimeters worth of cone displacement right and let's go and have a look at our cone excursion we are so far away from peak displacement guys that we are going to have a wonderful high bl distortion free experience that really is going to elevate the sound quality that you provide to your customers um times 10 right versus a traditional speaker of course we can also consider doing things like our filters so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bump this up to about 40 hertz right uh, maybe a little bit now you know that'll work for the time being we could actually sneak this volume down a little bit better um, get a more even cue out of this and let's go to our filters right because we don't want to drive our speakers without a high pass and a low pass generally speaking Let's go and set this to 30 hertz. Let's go and change this maybe into a third order. We'll stick with the Butterworth and we're gonna add this high pass in here. You can see we've hardly changed the low frequency extension. From a cone excursion perspective, we know that we're not going to run in, into any subharmonics, which could, uh, sub by subharmonics, I mean stuff below 20 hertz, right? We've got beautiful cone control in a micro-sized 18 inch cabinet 
what more could you possibly ask for? So yes, the driver might be expensive, um, but it has some qualities that for a professional, uh, it absolutely is worth it, guys. So there you go. We have uh, taken a quick run through the 18XL2000. We've got a pretty good response overall. We have got more than enough power to provide the output that is required. And um, of course, you know, again, that selling point of low distortion, XMAX is under control and um, we're in a really lightweight cabinet. You know, we can build something under 35 kilograms that is so appealing to people who are doing touring applications. And in my opinion, it is worth every cent. So keep that in mind. Yes, the 18XL2000 and drivers like the DS115 might seem appealing to build really big low frequency tuned cabinets, but consider that the brands have potentially made these to be really low distortion in really compact cabinets. Keep that in mind. Have a good day.